And I think we're live. I think we're going. There's some of you already in here. How lovely is that? What do we got? We got Carrie from British Columbia. Hi, Carrie. Nancy near Monterey. Monterey? Monterey, I think is how you pronounce it. I apologize in advance for saying it wrong the first or the second time, and all the other times I'll say it wrong today. Uh, Miss Lee Evans sending us some good vibes with her panda, like your panda. Dolores from PA. We got Nidkat. Nidkat. I can't pronounce your name. I'm sorry. From New York City. Uh, Carrie Swift, Taylor's aunt from north of Barrie. Hi, Carrie. Uh, Erica from Corona, California. Uh oh, they're, they're piling in. Mindy. Plants Recreation, Alyssa from Florida. Hey, Alyssa. Juanita from Texas. Mindy from Rhode Island. Oh, it's Nan. Sorry, Nan. I was being silly. Oh, you're on board. It's Germany. Oh, good. We're good. So we got Ezra from Germany, Cynthia from Stockton, California. A lot of people from California. Uh, Susan is happy to see us today. Well, thanks for joining us, Susan. Thanks for joining us in your day off. And we've got Carolyn Horn from the UK. Are you related to my friend Christine Horn by any chance? Carolyn Horn? Cassie from Vermont. And Rose from South Africa. We're all over the world. This is amazing. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off for just a second. And I will come back and give some more shout outs uh, later on. But we got to get to cooking today. I'm really excited uh, just this afternoon, and I'll put a post out in the public comments um, or community shortly, but we just launched um, a store inside of uh, the PB with Jay. I gotta turn that off, there we go. Uh, so if you go into the description of the video down below, you can go to a Shopify store we have, it's PB with Jay dot my shop my shopify dot com anyway the link's down there and we have some cool stuff we've got some some merch some hoodies and shirts uh some some mugs and, and and coffee stuff so people have been asking how you can support us uh in our channel uh, that's one way to do it now another way is through we have a tip jar i think you can you can give us a tip on this live stream as well if you want to anyway lots of options there so I'll leave up that little scroller on the bottom just to remind you. Uh, but otherwise, other scroller that I'll put up too, just to remind you, like, feel free to ask questions. And if you haven't let us know where you're watching from yet, uh, throw that in there and I will, I will continue to shout out and say hi. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to um, make a quick dessert and dinner tonight. This is stuff I've made on the channel before, so hopefully it's not too repetitious. Um, we're going to make a taco soup, which is by and large the most popular thing we make in our family. Everyone loves it. No complaints ever. Not even from Annie when she's hangry. Loves it. Uh, and we're also going to make my chocolate chia pudding. It's a blended chia pudding. So if you're not a fan of chia pudding, you will be after you try this. Um, and then after that, I'll try to take a little break in between and check in on the comments and answer any questions. But after that, because both those things are going to be pretty quick, I'll jump in and answer any questions you have got. So feel free to throw them in throughout the video. I'll get to them periodically, but it's just me here, so I can't fire back and forth that quickly. Uh, so let's start off. We're going to start off with making dessert. Because um, uh, once the Instant Pot's going, I'm using the same fuse for both. Once the Instant Pot's going with the taco soup, it's just got to kind of stay on. So I want to do the dessert first. And if you're like me, you probably make dessert first anyway, because it needs time to set or to bake or whatever. So to make the chocolate chia pudding, let me know in the comments below if you've made it before and if you love it and if you've modified it in any way. But I'll walk you through my, my traditional recipe, which I've got in my... My notebook. A bunch of people have asked me about making a cookbook, and I haven't done it yet, obviously. I need to look into it. I honestly just don't know anything about that world. 
if I could make my ideal cookbook, it would kind of be a combination of my handheld notes, but more legible. And then a lot of photos. Maybe one day in the future. Uh, so what I have, that's, yes, yeah, chia pudding first. <laughs> it's going to cut up some stuff. So why don't we, yeah, let's start at the very beginning. So I'm using uh, a Vitamix blender. You could use any high-speed blender you want. Uh, I don't know if a regular blender will do this as well as this will. Uh, a food processor probably won't make everything as creamy as you would want it to be. But if that's all you got, give it a shot. Because the worst thing is you're still going to have something delicious. It'll probably just be a little chunky. Uh, I mean, you could probably do it in a food processor. And then if you had an immersion blender, puree it from that. It, the one tip I would say, if you do have a food processor and not a high-speed blender, I would just soak the dates in advance. And that'll definitely help you with making everything a little bit smoother. Cool beans. All right, so we're gonna start with two cups of your plant milk of choice, non-dairy milk, unsweetened is what I'm using. You do you. Uh, this is just almond milk um, because that's what we buy from Costco because it's 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 cost effective. But I'm gonna have a video coming up probably in a month from now or so where I test out a whole bunch of different milks. So I'm looking forward to that. So so stay tuned for that in the upcoming months. Anyway. Two cups of this. The common theme you're going to see with both of these things today is everything just goes inside one pot and you're done. Super simple. This, this can be done in like three minutes if I wasn't yapping at you. Okay. So, uh, and then we need six tablespoons of chia seeds. So the typical chia pudding is you just kind of mix the, the milk with whatever flavors and you put it in the fridge and then you let it sit and then it gets, you know, it, it chunks up and some people just don't like that. I got to count now. Two, three, four, five, six. I would have messed that up. Uh, and the beauty to this is that it's blended. So anyone that says they don't like chia pudding because of the texture, this is the salt for that. Okay. Now we need uh, a quarter cup of cocoa powder. This isn't actually the cocoa powder I use anymore. I just really like this jar. I get, uh, the non-alkaline, good, healthier version from a bulk store. So a quarter cup of cocoa powder. I wouldn't go with more because it's just going to make it bitterer, more bitter, uh, whichever of those is grammatically correct. Uh, the only thing you might want to vary, depending on your taste, is your sweetness level which is where we're gonna come in right now with the dates. So I'm using just regular dates. So if you have medjool dates, you might wanna cut this in half because they're bigger. Make sure you don't have any pits inside because you don't wanna make your blender upset. You don't wanna hurt it. So what I got here, I said I wrote down eight regular dates or four medjool dates. Um, and like, we like it a little bitter here but also depending on the size of your dates, like I'll probably put in 10 because I got some small ones here. So you can really adjust this to your likeness, likeness, liking. Uh, some people like more, some people like less. It's all good. Nope, oh, that one's that one's gonna be mean. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many dates? If you've made this before, how many dates do you use in yours? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're hoping to see someone else from the clan today, I apologize. It really is just me. I know last time we did this, Annie was sick and she was home, but she's not. She is well at school. She's got a basketball game today. She's not great at basketball, but boy, does she try. And she's getting better. It's her first year playing. Uh, no, that's not true. It's her second year. She just, uh, she just really likes the game of it. She doesn't like learning when it comes to sports, but... She likes the social aspect, I think. Okay, now because I've been talking with you lovely people, I have to double check that I haven't missed anything. Okay, milk, check. Chia seeds, check. Cocoa powder, check. Vanilla, check. I just put the vanilla in. I don't even think I mentioned it. And the dates. You probably noticed that I just poured it out into the cap and plopped it in. And you're like, what's that maniac doing? This is about a teaspoon, I find. I find most vanilla extract... Lids are a better teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. Nobody ever got upset by having 
too much chia, Ch vanilla. <laughs> My brain right now. Okay, here we go. It's gonna get loud for a second. Yeah. So, uh, you know, bear with us. I'll probably let this go for, I don't know, if I wasn't recording with you all, I'd let it go for at least two minutes because I want it to just really, really get creamy. Uh, let's see if I can't come over and talk to you while it's happening in the background. So I apologize right now for the noise. It's going to be loud. And what we're going to do is just start at the bottom setting and crank it all the way up. If I need to, I'll go in there and move this around so it, it gets nice and smooth. It's super loud, I'm sorry. I, I, if you need to mute your volume or whatever you need to do right now, I totally respect that. All right. Let's see what we got in the comments below. Oh, who have I missed? Hi, Ruby. Hi, Mark from Nottingham. And we got Lori from California. Karen from Maine. Hello, Karen. Olafa, Olafia, Olafia from Norway. Hey, Tanya from London, Ontario. Aw, thanks, Tanya. I like Annie, too. I'm going to keep her around for a little while longer. Oh, well, this is perfect timing. All right, where are we at? Okay. I think we're good. So that was about, well, we had more people join while it was noisy. Kudos to you. Uh, so hopefully you could hear me. I don't know how loud that was. Uh, but thanks for bearing with it, bearing through it. Okay. Uh, I'm just, because tonight's a bit of a cluster mess in our house, we have Annie's going to be late from basketball. Uh, Ephraim's got guitar lesson. Then Annie's got to go to Pathfinders, which I don't know if you have that other place in the world. It's like Brownies, Guides, Pathfinders. So she's going to that later on. We just, we have a different schedule on Wednesdays in our family right now. So that's why I'm making this meal now and making this dessert because it's literally come home when you're home and eat it. You're good to go. So normally if we were all having dessert together, I'd probably just put this in one big bowl just so that it would set together and I could close it up and it doesn't form a little skin on top. But this way, I'm going to be honest, I'm doing this because the kids will take it all. If I just put it in one big bowl and say, help yourselves, if they get there first, Wooly and I aren't getting any of it. So this is <laughs> protecting mine and Wooly's dessert tonight. That's the real reason I'm doing it, if I'm being completely honest. It is smoking. So check it out. Looks pretty good. So I'll put one up here so you can see it well. Maybe I'll let me get rid of the, uh, you can probably see a little bit better if I take off these things. Uh, see how smooth and creamy that is? Reminds me of like jello pudding commercials from my childhood. Uh, so you could just eat it right away like this. I will put it in the fridge because it's going to thicken nicely over time. Um, and we're going to have this a couple hours from now. So, you know, like I said, you can eat it right away. I, I would let it chill at a minimum, probably 30 minutes. It'll just let that chia plump up too. It'll make it get a little thicker. And you could eat this just as it is right now. Um, but you could also go to town with this. You could use this as part of a parfait if you wanted to layer some fruit and some other stuff. And then on top, uh, I for me, this is what I'm going to do with it tonight. I'm going to put a little bit of, probably cut up some banana slices and top it with my granola. I made a fresh batch of granola yesterday. So... I'm very likely just going to do that. Now, this is where this is where if my kids were here. They would break out the scale and make sure everyone was getting the same amount. 
but I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to be that person. I think this is pretty, this one needs a little love. My one complaint about the Vitamix is I always feel like I'm missing a good five or 10% of it. I used to have a different kind of scraper that I left at our farm that kind of pulls it out a bit more. This is the new thing that they give you. And I have mixed feelings. I also have mixed feelings about this, like the really wide base. Because I feel like you need to do really big batches of stuff to get it to blend smoothly. Anyone else have those Vitamix challenges? It's just me. Are you guys Nutribullet people? I'm not sponsored by either of them, so for the time being, I'm happy to give my completely unfiltered opinion. Um, okay. Oh, what's that? You want me to taste it? Okay. It's delicious. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. The OCD cooking me just desperately wants to clean this out, but I want to keep you all entertained. So I'm going to fight that urge right now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shift over. Let's uh, to taco soup time. But you know what? So I'm going to put that up just so you know. We're now into taco soup mode. Um, and again, say hi if you haven't yet. If you're, if you're just joining us, let us know where you're, where you're watching from if you haven't yet already. My sink is disgusting right now because I just drained some beans that I cooked in the Instant Pot. I'm going to rinse this real quick. I, I have to. I'm sorry. You get it. The other OCD people in the kitchen understand. I know, I know there's at least like one of you out there that feels my pain and just knows that they have to rinse that dish. Otherwise it's gonna drive them insane. Okay, thank you for bearing with me. All right, now we are in the taco soup mood. I'm gonna put these aside. They'll be fine there for now. Don't eat them. Super tempting. Okay, taco soup. So what I haven't done yet, one second. So the prep for this is insanely fast once you've gathered all your, all your things. Let me say that again, because I'm sure I was making noise over all of it. The prep for this is insanely fast once you have got everything together. Um, flip over to my recipe. Basically, all you have to do is gather a bunch of stuff, cut up a pepper, and cut up an onion. So give me a second while I do that. Um, not that you probably need a lesson in cutting vegetables, but since we're here, and you got to watch me do it anyway, this is how I break down a pepper. So I, I put it outside. I cut off the top, which makes that part fall away right away. I do the same thing on the bottom. And then what I do is I kind of, I'll try to do this in a way that you can see. I'll cut down here and then I'll just slowly work my way around the pepper and cut out the pith like this. And then the bell, the seeds, it's all out, super simple. So now depending on how I need to further break it down, if I'm doing a stir fry and I just want strips and it's just boom, boom, boom. But for this, I kind of want it diced. Uh, and you know, it's taco soup. It's a bit rustic, so you don't have to be too pretty. So I'm just going to do like a really quick chop just to get it into bite-sized pieces. Um, really quick. So top and the bottom too, I put it all in, but anything I don't have like that, this and the stem is going to go into my broth bag. And if you don't want to be by that, I keep a little bag in our freezer full of all the scraps and trimmings from the vegetables as long as they're not like funky and going bad everything goes in there so i'm going to break this down into smaller pieces because it just makes it easier so i'll put any vegetable trimmings any herbs fresh herbs that are starting to turn into that broth bag uh, and then when i'm at a broth i will just put a couple handfuls into that into my large pot 
fill it full of nice clean tap water and then just bring it to a boil, let it sit for a few minutes and then let it marinate for a couple hours. And then I pour it into mason jars and that's my broth. Um, <clears throat> just make sure that if you are adding like fresh herbs and stuff like that to your home broth, have a variety, you know, try, try to not grab all the rosemary in one handful. Um, and the other tip is lemon peels or, uh, I mean, I guess lime would work too. I haven't really done it are really, really nice in broth too. They bring a little brightness and acidity to it. Okay. So now how I do a, an onion and it's probably the same as how most of you do an onion is I never touch that part cause that's holding it all together. So I cut off the top and again, it's going to go in my broth bag. Uh, and then I just try to split it, oops, split it down the middle so that the root is still over about half of it on both sides. And then I peel away usually the top layer because it's a bit tough anyway. And again, broth bag, nothing, none of this gets wasted really until I, until I boil it and then I throw it out. Or if we're at the farm, it goes into our compost pit so we can grow more veggies the next year. And then I just do the traditional method, which again, I don't know how familiar any of you are with this kind of stuff, but I just do slits all the way down, somewhat evenly spaced. I don't know if you can see, let me get rid of that ticker banner, just in case you can't see. Um, and then I just do, depending on how fat the onion is, one or two slides along here. I'll do the same to this one. And I'm not being like super picky about how big it is. Again, this is a quick rustic meal. This is something I can throw together in about five minutes uh, if I'm not chatting with people on the internet. And then I just, and then because you've already done all the slits, as soon as it comes out, it starts to dice. So you're getting all those little pieces. Anyway, I'm sure that was not news for most of you, but just in case, you know, it's uh, that's the challenging thing about doing a food channel is you you constantly feel like you're mansplaining things to people, but then when you don't, people let you know in the comments below that you're not being as uh, communicative as you could be. So, I'm trying to find a little balance. All right, back to making taco soup. Back to I mentioned at the beginning. If you're just coming in later, we just launched a merch store finally for PB with Jay because people have been asking if we had any merch they could purchase to support the channel. So. In the description down below you can look and see what we got and then you can also let me know uh if there's anything that we don't have that you'd like to see we're just experimenting and trying it out so uh we're happy to to provide things that are interesting for the people okay so literally all this is going to go in the pot and the order of it isn't even that important really the only thing you have to remember and i have to give myself another Measuring cup. The only thing that's really important is you put the lentils, the red lentils on last on top and you don't mix it in because if the lentils are mixed in, they're going to sink to the bottom in the instant pot and you're going to get a burn warning. Now, I know what you're asking. If you don't have an instant pot, can you make this on the stove? Absolutely, you can. I've actually never done it. So this is what I would do. I would take these onions and the pepper, and I would saute them until the onion gets, you know, translucent and the pepper starts to soften a little bit. And then I would add the spices that we've got here on top of that. And then I would add everything else in, um, same deal with lentils on top, bring that up to a boil. And really you're just letting it cook until the lentils are soft and everything else is cooked through. I would say 20 minutes will probably do it for you. Um, but you just got to kind of judge it based on how it's going. Again, I haven't done it, but it seems pretty straightforward that that's what I would do. Okay. So I have got, I'll give you the increments again, this, um, I, I don't know why. Oh, maybe I did. I think in the description below, I put the recipe links, but I'll try to remember them right now as well. So I've got basically a can's worth of, um, black, pe black beans and red kidney beans. You can use any beans you want. If you want to use pinto beans in here, that would be fine. If you want to use chickpeas, that would be fine too. These are just kind of a traditional chili bean. So that is what we're using. 
Next, we'll throw in the onions. And I'm not sauteing everything. I'm just going to cook it all together. If you wanted to saute the onions first, you could. Um, I just don't because I'm lazy. I think that's the real answer. Uh, and I just want to, you know, this is the kind of meal I definitely make when we just don't have time in a day. Now, what do I want to do? Okay, let's put the, it's a whole can of tomatoes. Here in Canada, most of our tomato, tomatoes come in these 28 ounce cans. I think in the States anyway, they're like half this, like 14 and a half ounces. So I put the whole can in. Uh, two and a half cups of vegetable broth. If you are out of vegetable broth, you can just use water and then maybe add a couple extra spices or seasonings to it. But there's a lot of flavor in here already. So you don't even really need that. So that's one. And what's kind of fun, what I like about my broth is it's never the same. Ever. It depends on what we made the week before. Sometimes it's a little purple because there's beets in there or red cabbage. And sometimes it's just like that, which kind of looked like nothing, but it's got a nice little flavor to it. Especially because, like I said, I added that lemon in. Let me just double check. It is two and a half cups, right, Jeremy? Yes, it is. Good job, Jeremy. I always have to check my recipes. I never remember. There's a couple that I can do off the back of my head because I just I make them all the time. But it's been a beat since I made this one. Uh, the kids make this often too because they can just they know it so well they can throw it together. Cup of frozen corn. If you got fresh corn, even better. But frozen corn is perfect for this. Um, we're going to throw in... I'm going to be honest with you. I usually... I think the recipe says a half a can of tomato paste. I put the whole can in because it, uh, you know, it's flavor. It adds extra flavor. It also thickens the, the soup up nicely. And in Canada, we don't have those tubes. I've seen those tubes they have in the States and other parts of the world that look like toothpaste tubes and you roll them and you just take out what you need. So normally what I would just do if I didn't use the whole can, I would freeze this in like tablespoon chunks because otherwise this always goes bad in the fridge. You always forget it, you know? And then you've opened three more and it just goes bad. So at this point, I'm going to start breaking this down and just stirring it all around. It's just, there's not much to see. It's kind of a giant. Let me, let me try though. Let me try. It's just a giant mishmash of all the things, right? So I'm just going to mix that around until it's kind of mixed before I add the last few ingredients. Okay. Bring this back up. Salsa, half a cup of salsa. Is that right? Yep. Use whatever spice you like. If you're really into spicy, spicy, go with hot. I think this is medium. Yep. If you make your own homemade salsa, that would be fine. If you're out of salsa, tomato sauce would be fine here too. But this gives it more of the taco variety, right? Gives it more of that oomph. What am I missing? Spices. Okay, so it's going to be a half a teaspoon each of chili powder, garlic powder, and cumin. If you want a little spicier, throw in more chili powder, or you could even throw in a little bit of cayenne pepper if you want to as well. The other thing you could throw in here, I just, I got used to making this when the kids were really little and didn't like spice, but oh no, this jar doesn't like me. Luckily, it's open on one side. I need new spice jars. That's what I should find, put on the store. People with Jay's spice jars, huh? Huh? So you can put a jalapeno in here. Uh, and I'll just remind people to ask questions if you want to ask any questions. And I'll get the questions after I throw this on, which will be very, very shortly. Okay. Um, so you can put more chili powder in there for more spice. Cut up some jalapenos or scotch bonnet or whatever peppers you like. I'm actually going to put a little more chili powder in there. Because I think when I wrote this in my cookbook, it was... To accommodate children's palates. And they're not little anymore. They actually like a little bit of spice. Annie in particular really likes it. Ephraim thinks he does until he has some. And then uh, and then he doesn't so much. Okay. So 
Let me move this stuff around see if you can't get a better view of this. I don't want to. Is that better? Kind of, sort of. So it's just, you know, you just mix it around so everything is combined, especially you get those spices all around in there. And then what I want to do is put um, three quarters of a cup of red lentils just on top. And again, you don't want to mix these in if you're using the Instant Pot because they're gonna to float to the bottom, sink to the bottom, floating goes going up, sorry. I have word vomit sometimes. Uh, you just wanna put them on the top, need a little another half of this, and kind of pat them down a little bit because, yeah, you don't want them to burn. And I know what you're saying, well, if they're not mixed in, how do they cook? Well, the beauty of the Instant Pot is it's just creating steam inside, right? So there's liquid all around it, even if it's not mixed in. So, but what I do do is I just kind of pat it down with my hand so that it just kind of nestles in and settles into the taco soup without starting to like fall down. And, and I won't be opening this while you're here. I imagine we'll probably wrap up by that point, but when you open this up, it's going to look, like the lentils are on the top, some of them will start floating down, but just give it a mix around and let it kind of sit for a minute so that all the, the flavors can, can mingle and come together in the pot as, uh, as Kevin from the office would say. Okay, that's it. We made taco soup. Uh-oh. So all I'm gonna do is put this on the Instant Pot for 15 minutes on manual set on like the regular manual setting of pressure cooking setting. This is the instant pot. If you watched uh, the instant pot vegan cookbook video, it still works. I didn't burn down the house. I, uh, I fixed it myself using a YouTube video, which the link is in the description of that video too. Okay. Sorry, I thought I saw something weird in there. I'm like, did I drop something in there? Okay. 15 minutes. And then if you're in a bind, you could let it quick release and get rid of, uh, get rid of all the uh, steam and whatnot. But because I'm making this early in the day, I'm just gonna let it sit, let it naturally release. And the longer it sits, the more the flavors mingle, but you could make this right away. It does take a while to come up. So it's not necessarily a quick, quick meal. But I like it because I can throw it all in and then I can go back to my day, walk the dog, do some evening things and just come back to it. That's really the benefit to doing it in here as opposed to the stove top is being able to walk away and letting it sit and knowing I don't have to stir it or anything like that. 15 minutes. Bada boom. Bada bing. All right. And we're done. So why don't we venture around my kitchen and I'm going to start to answer questions in a minute after I tidy up just a bit. Um, mostly I want to get this, these, these chia puddings into the fridge. So don't do me a favor. Do not tell Wooly that I walked around our kitchen because it's a mess. It's always a mess. She hates that I showed on camera but I know that you all appreciate it because you're just as messy as we are. Um, and, you know, I try to tidy up before we shoot in the kitchen, but life is life. You know what I'm saying? And uh, there's emails to answer and there's other things to do, but we always do like a kitchen reset at the end of the day, which just kind of cleanses my soul and calms us all down. And, you know, we, we never show it in the videos, but we always just do like a family cleanup together where everyone helps out, especially if you didn't help cook. If you didn't help cook, you're cleaning. And then the kids try to get out of that by saying they have to go to the bathroom. They always, it's magically their bowels always kick in right after dinner. Do your kids do that? Ours do. Um, so yeah, <laughs> probably a little, a little more information than you needed or wanted in there. Sorry. <laughs> but if you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, you know, we don't exactly shy away from being super honest with all of you. So hopefully you appreciate the overt honesty as well. Okay, so we're more or less cleaned up. I just got to wash some dishes after. So now uh, now I can sit down and catch up on you. There's 85 comments. 
you people are amazing. So uh, I got some time. I can hang out for probably till about three o'clock my time. Let's just see how it goes. And if you get bored of me, <laughs> and as I get through your answers, let me just have a little a little aqua. Okay. So what do we got here? Wonderful, wonderful people. First of all, thank you for coming and hanging out with me this afternoon. It is so much less lonely cooking with other people, especially when I'm by myself in the afternoons sometimes. So I really appreciate you taking your time out. I know you guys are from all over the world. I'm in Toronto. It's like 2.30 in the afternoon for me right now. But I know for some of you, it's really late. For some of you in California, it's a lot earlier. So, you know, thank you so much for coming out and, uh, and spending your time with us. So now I will, let me see if I can't find where we left off. So uh, window to my life, you're making vegan bean tamales. Tama Here's the thing. I love Mexican cuisine. I don't know if I've tamale. I know that's like, you got a little image there. It's wrapped in like a plant leaf, right? And you eat the plant leaf. Let me know. I don't think I've had tamales as a regular part of like my rotation of, of uh, Mexican cuisine, but I love, I mean, we just made some, so, you know, uh, that's something I would definitely make if I had a recipe for it. In fact, as a reminder, um, we've been asking people, I'll put a little banner here just to remind you that we want to do a video. Um, I'm going to write my email in there so you can all see it. Um, we want to do a video where we do reviews of your cookbooks, <laughs> your cookbooks, your recipes. Um, so we've already got a bunch of people have sent us some, so I'm starting to amass them, but I'm going to start shooting that shortly and uh, probably put it up sometime in the new year. So if you haven't done so yet and you want us to cook one of your recipes for the channel, send it our way. Uh, and I apologize in advance for how my kids react to your recipes because, you know, they're, 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 I'm teaching them to be constructive without being mean, even though sometimes it's funny to listen to them be mean. <laughs> uh, okay. Where were we? We got Anita from Central Coast, California, near Pismo Beach. Hi, Anita. If you're still here, you mentioned that a little while ago. Mindy says they have to try the chia pudding. Yes, but you can't try ours because I only made enough for the four of us and... Things happen when someone tries to steal someone else's pudding in this house. Karen's made the chocolate chia pudding. Oh, you had berries on top. You don't like straight chocolate. Yeah, I like to have a little texture with mine. But if you like just smooth and creamy, then that's the pudding for you. Uh, I do, even though I like texture, I don't love the texture of like chia pudding with all like the bumps and whatnot. So I really, really, really like to blend it up. It's very similar. That's kind of where I came up with the idea for my Fogart recipe, for those of you that know it and try it, which is something I um, make and put in my breakfast, is like milk with a like usually a, a banana or pumpkin puree or some other soft kind of fruit with chia seeds and sometimes uh, a little bit of protein powder. And I blend that up too, and the chia seeds get grinded up and they plump up. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll blend that up, put it in the fridge, go and have a walk or a workout and then I'll come back and I'll add that to some fresh fruit and some granola or something. Uh, but it's, it's in the same family as this chia pudding. It's a blended chia pudding. Uh, yeah, super easy to make. And, and Mindy's asking if it's like tapioca. Uh, yeah. I mean, the traditional chia pudding is more like tapioca, I think where it's a bit lumpier, uh, or, but less so than like a rice pudding, which, oh man, I love rice pudding. Really, really love me a rice pudding. I mean, sweet, fat, and carbs, right? You can't, you can't really go wrong. Um, yeah, and like Karen's saying, because they're all blended up, you wouldn't even know they're there. Carrie is asking, is it possible to do flavors other than chocolate? For sure. We just do chocolate all the time because we love chocolate. You could easily throw in some nut butter of your choice, almond or peanut or cashew, and make it like, a, you know, you can make it like a Reese's pieces kind of peanut butter chocolate uh variation in there uh i mean really it's the milk and the chia seeds so you know if you wanted to you could throw in some any fruit you know you could put in there 
uh, you might just want to make sure if you're using frozen fruit that you thaw it first and get rid of the excess liquid or just put in less milk. So that way the ratio of the chia to the milk is the same. But you could easily um, use any fruit probably and make uh, a pudding out of that, which means I got to do that sometimes. <laughs> we just always fall into the, the same traps of making the same chocolate pudding. But uh, again, I'm making this up as I go, but I think that's what I would do if I was to make a, a fruit version. And I think it would work real well. It would just, it would just take some um, playing to figure out the texture of it. I would start with like a cup of whatever fruit you want to use and then go from there. That's probably equivalent to like the amount of dates. And I don't even know if you'd need the dates if you're using fruit. You might need a little bit um, to sweeten it, or you could put a little bit of maple syrup if you wanted to, but depending on the fruit, it might just be sweet enough. So I don't even know if I would mess with it. Uh, Susan, thanks for going at a good pace and repeating things. Yeah, that's mostly because of my OCD. <laughs> I can't remember if I told you something or not. Um, but uh, but you are very, very welcome. Karen said they used four of the large ones. That was half an hour ago. I don't even know what you're referring to. Uh, maybe skip the banner at the bottom next time as it covers up some of the action. Okay, cool. Thanks for letting me know. I will do that in the future. Have you made the medjool... Date slab with peanut butter chocolate. No, but I saw someone post that recipe where they basically just um, like chop up a bunch of dates and then slather it with peanut butter. And then I think they drizzled dark chocolate on top. Is that what you're talking about, Cal? I saw that on somebody's TikTok or short. And I said to myself, I have to make that. And I haven't done it yet. But we have tons of dates. There's no reason that I haven't done it yet besides the fact that I just haven't gotten around to it. But I, I should because it's, you know, it's pretty much whole food plant based with the exception of the chocolate. But uh, but you could probably just do it with the peanut butter, too. Um, or you can make like a healthier version of your own chocolate if you wanted to. with just using some maple syrup and some cocoa powder and maybe a little bit of milk or something and, and mixing that up. Again, I've not I've never done it. I'm making up how I would how, how I would attack that if I was to give it um, a shot. Pins of salt for the pudding. Yeah. I mean that's that's a that's a personal choice. Um, you could totally do that. Now I think you could also if you just left out the cocoa, it'd probably be more of like a caramel kind of pudding, with just using the dates in there. Again, haven't tried it, but I imagine that would definitely be good with a little bit of salt in there. Um, yeah, you could easily put a little bit of salt in there if if you don't mind having a little bit of extra salt, you know. Uh, and I didn't add any salt or pepper to the taco soup because. Uh, what we like to do, I should have mentioned this when I was making the taco soup, but what we like to do for that after that's done is, you know, we almost put out like a little selection of additional toppings potentially, right? So, you know, a little bit of salt and pepper, you want to put that in, some additional hot sauces if you're prone to the hot sauce in our family. Uh, avocado slices um, are very, very welcome. And um, Wooly is prone to putting olives on top. I, I will do that too sometimes. And then we always serve it with some uh, tortilla chips, right? In fact, I sometimes just like, instead of having a spoon, I'll just take a bowl of tortilla chips and just scoop out <laughs> and eat it that way. Like it's a dip. So that's how I will be eating it later on tonight with some, uh, some tortilla chips. But you can put whatever you want. Let me know in the comments below what you would put with the taco soup because it's it's kind of really again like you could put more some jalapeno peppers in there uh, any other kind of peppers that you like it's really customizable which is really really great um and you could swap out the beans yeah it's really 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 great that way hi terry from north carolina if you put a mouse pad on the blender it's a little quieter i don't have a mouse pad i'd have to go back in time to find a mouse pad Every computer I've had recently, they're all just trackpads. But uh, that's a hot tip for other people out there. Oh, you're making it with us? Are you doing both of them or just the taco soup or the or the chia pudding? That's impressive. And it's not too loud. Good to know. Thank you. It's, it's a bit late now. It's <laughs> too late for me to adjust that, but thanks. Uh, and you would put a touch of salt in too, Carrie says. 
Lori from Utah. Hello, Lori. Denise from Windsor, California. We have a Windsor in Ontario. It's it's very close to Detroit. Um, a couple hours from where I am. Split pea and sweet potato soup. That sounds good. Is that your own recipe you have, Dolores? If so, you should probably put it in the chat so people can, you know, can use it. In fact, you should email it to me, right? Like I was saying, email it to me right here. And maybe my family and I will make it for our recipe video where we, we take your videos and, and put them to the test. And I try to make my, my kids be not mean. <laughs> Hi from Quebec, Canada. And Mindy says she loves her house. Thanks, Mindy. I like it too. You know what I should do? I wrote down a couple questions that uh, people asked that couldn't be here. Uh, for One thing I wanted to say uh, is that uh, I wanted to say happy birthday to Brandy. If she's watching, she mentioned something about today being her birthday and being excited that there's a new video. So happy birthday to Brandy. If Brandy is, uh, is in the house, let it be known. Say hi. We can all wish you a little happy birthday. Let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite birthday meals are, because I think for my birthday in January this year, I'm going to do a video of all of my family's favorite meals or favorite birthday meals that they would want to have if we were to like have dinner at home and not order out. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I make my birthday cake too. So that'll be coming at the beginning of January for my, my upcoming birthday. Uh, oh, 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 I lost the thread. Where are we good? Where are we going? Sorry, just scrolling through so many. I'm, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with love by these comments. I just really, really, it's, I can't tell you how much I enjoy all of your comments you make on the videos and spending time chatting with all of you. Um, you know, I think it's really special, this little community we've started to build on the channel here. And just all the stories I've heard and the success stories of people using some of the stuff they've learned from our videos and it helping them with their their weight and whatnot. It's I, I can't tell you, it's it's really, really meaningful to me and my family. And we really enjoy reading those comments. So keep them coming. You know, we try to respond to as many as we can. Um, hi, Marion from Ireland. Hello. I'm trying to make this also me not just saying hi to people because I'm sure that's not super interesting. Um Julie has a question. Can you explain how to make oatmeal in the Instant Pot for one person? Oh, can I ever? Julie, you came to the right person. So, Julie, I make oatmeal on the reg. Uh, so, how I do it, sorry, I just switched over. And now I got to get back to uh, where the comments are at so I don't miss any of these comments. So, there's Julie's. Okay. So, uh, it's super simple to make you know, oatmeal in the instant pot. Literally, it is uh, whatever amount of oats you want, double the amount of liquid. Uh, so for me, my recipe is like a half a cup of oats, which I find is the right serving for me. And then a, a cup of liquid. So for me, that's usually a, a combination of water and non-dairy milk. You could just do one or the other if you want a little creamier. I do find if you just, depending on uh, how thick the plant milk you use is that um, it might not have enough liquid in there. So that's what I do. I do that. I put it on the porridge setting. I don't know why mine defaults to 20 minutes. Do not do that. Three minutes. It's all you need three minutes and let it come to a natural release. It'll take a few more minutes to do that. Honestly, and then if you want to, what I also will put in there, that, that's the base recipe. And then I'll usually put in a tablespoon of flax seeds for the health of it. And it thickens it up a little bit and then sprinkle some cinnamon in. Uh, and that's like the, my base recipe, right? Uh, sometimes I will chop up an apple and put it on top. And what's really cool is the instant pot will like cook it down. And so when you come back and mix it in, it's almost like an apple sauce and it blends right in with the oats. Really nice. Otherwise, I'll add all my other fruits in afterwards, right? Same thing. You could add some pumpkin in there instead of the apple. Uh, I find with pumpkin, sometimes I get a burn warning. So be careful with doing pumpkin inside uh, the initial cook. You could probably just add it in afterwards too. So what I like to do is I'll throw that all in the pot and then I'll go and do my morning workout, which is usually half an hour long or so, or I'll go for a walk if it's like a weekend morning and I'm not working out. 
And usually that's about a half an hour or so. And I find by that time, the oatmeal is cooked in the Instant Pot. It's, it's naturally released and it's, it's kind of calmed down a little bit. That's kind of how I approach the oatmeal, but it's super simple. And then if you want to make a giant batch for the week, just increase those quantities um, for however many batches you want to make or however many people. On, on the website, pbwj.ca, I have a ton of oatmeal recipes for different variations of flavors. So I think I got like a Black Forest cake recipe in there. There's a tropical one, strawberry rhubarb. And all of those uh, give that base recipe plus whatever mix-ins I add. But when I make oatmeal, it's like it's that, a couple servings of fruit, a tablespoon or two of some nuts and seeds on top. And that's about it. I used to add dried fruit, but now I don't because I'm just like, I don't think I actually need the extra calories in there. Um, oh, Carolyn's enjoying my banter. Thanks. Uh, 4.36 a.m. Clark, you're a hero. Good for you. I don't know if you're, are you just waking up or just going to bed or still up? That's always a question when someone's, someone's uh, calling in at that time. Tomorrow's are surrounded by corn massa. Well, that did, that just made it more confusing. <laughs> I don't know what, I, I'd look it up, what corn massa is. Wrapped in a corn husk. There we go. Thank you. I knew massa was a corn word because it's on the corn package. But in the corn husk. So you probably don't eat that then, right? All right. Everyone's explaining to me here. Here we go. You spoon the tamale out of the corn husk. We have a local tamale guy who makes vegan tamales. Well, I got to come and visit you, Janet. And then we can go to your tamale guy. Janet's got the tamale hookup, everyone. Okay, so let me jump in and uh, and jump on some questions that people asked before. Do I have any hot chocolate recipes or hot beverage recipes going into the fall and winter? I have a hot beverage in the evenings. I my favorite one, and I think I'm gonna look it up and see if I have it in here, is a turmeric latte. Um, and if I had gotten my my stuff together today, I would have made it with you. Here it is, turmeric latte mix. So my turmeric latte mix is that it's uh three tablespoons of turmeric two tablespoons of uh ginger so that'd be like a ground ginger uh tablespoon of cinnamon a half a teaspoon of nutmeg a pinch of star anise optional as i wrote there there it is uh and then a little bit of black pepper just a little quirk 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 uh, mix that together and then store it in an airtight container. And what do I say? So to make one mug is I'll, I'll warm up a cup of um, non-dairy milk. And I'll add uh, two teaspoons of that mixture along with a tablespoon of maple syrup. And I'll mix that all together inside of my stovetop. And that's how I make uh, a little hot mixture. Uh, turmeric latte. Lovely. I love that recipe. Uh, I'm sure I borrowed that from someone and modified it. I think I added the black pepper because I know that black pepper unlocks some extra health things inside of turmeric. Um, oh, someone asked me, how long does aquafaba stay good? Um, so aquafaba, the real honest answer, so aquafaba, for those who don't know, um, is the leftover liquid from cooked chickpeas. So either the can of chickpeas that you've got from the store, or if you cook your own chickpeas, it's the liquid that you drain out. So if you ever make your own chickpeas, keep that liquid because it's gold. It's, it's called aquafaba. And if it's really, really thin when you make your own, you might want to boil it down and just um, get it to like a, a thicker consistency, almost like a thin gravy. Uh, the consistency that comes in the can is kind of perfect. So many things you can use with that. You can, I make whipped cream with that. I'll use that as an oil, oil replacement in baking and other recipes. Um, you can use it as an egg wash on top of baked goods as well uh, to, you know, if you want to, basically it's an oil replacement, right? Or an egg replacement. So it's just pure gold. Uh, don't ever throw that stuff out. But the question is, how long does this stay in the fridge? I've used it for sure up to a week in the fridge, um, maybe a little bit longer. Here's the thing. You open that thing up, give it a whiff. Your nose will tell you real quick whether or not you want to put that in your body. If it smells funky, don't use it. You know, smell it when you first put it in. That's the general smell. So if you don't like that smell, that's not going to help you. But that's the general smell. And then, you know, uh, if you start to notice it getting funkified, 
yeah, throw it out. It's not going to kill you, I don't think. Not a doctor. But uh, it's just going to be maybe not have the right flavor. And it might make your tummy hurt a little bit. I don't know. We've never actually had that problem. Usually we, we use it all up or we chuck it out because it looks, looks or smells funky. Apologize for the additional noises coming on. We have the, the instant pot is starting to warm up. Uh, Susan works 10 hours a day. Uh, I really don't like using the microwave. I can make soup and bring in the thermos because it stays hot for a long time. Yeah, hot tip. Yeah, soups are great. Like Usually when we make any kind of soup, I try to make a double or triple batch because it's just great for me for a quick lunch if I'm working from home. Uh, the kids have really good thermoses that they'll take to school with them. Same as Wooly. She has a thermos she takes to school and she has no time because she works with the littles at school. So uh, it's, you know, people. a lot of people ask me, what do you have for lunch? It's like, well, I don't know. What did I have for the night before for dinner? That's usually the answer. Pressure's cooker spaghetti. Uh, <coughs> you can't do that with uh, gluten-free pasta that I've, in my experience, it does not work out that well. <coughs> Pardon me, I got a little, got a little sip of the old aqua. Oh, you cook the noodles in the regular pot, then you add them. That makes sense. Yeah. So you're basically making the sauce in the in the pressure cooker. Well, now I know I want to know what your sauce recipe is. <clears throat> oh, so cooking, uh, do do an episode for people who have to bring their lunches and suppers. That's a good. We could focus on some. Yeah. Uh, jot this down. Thank you very much, Susan, for the idea. We are, again, people give us ideas for videos all the time in the comments. So don't ever shy away from doing that. Lunches for busy people is what I'm going to write down. Overs, soups. Constantly. I, I've got far more. Don't, for those that are worried that we might stop making videos, I have got way too many, first of all, video ideas, but also cookbook recommendations that you've sent us over time that we'll be making videos for a long time in the future. As long as you people keep showing up and showing the love, we will be around to uh, to make those videos because we really, really do love it. Love that we do a kitchen reset. Yeah. It's just, I, I don't know that with you, but it's just like, if I wake up in the morning and the kitchen looks like a disaster, I just, I'm, 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 I'm upset inside. I don't like it. I like to start the day fresh, clean. So we just try to like reset the kitchen back down to normal to a nice calm, calm vibe. Okay. Cooking show for one. Uh, okay. Yeah. Back into just addition for, um, for Susan Day Dairy. Recipes for one. Recipes for one. Yeah, I'm also going to start. Uh, some of you might have watched the video we did. I think it was called Cooking for Carnivores, where I went to somebody's house and hosted a dinner party for them. We're going to do a lot more of that in the channel. We've got, I'm going to shoot another one in a couple weeks. We're starting to line those up because that was, uh, I think a lot of people really liked that video. And also, it was just a lot of fun for us to do. So um, we're, we're kind of collecting ideas for the types of people we can go and see. And one of them would definitely be like a, a person single on their own and making, uh, making things for them. Uh... <clears throat> Greener for them. Live in a camper, no room for an instant pot. Really? I would think a camper would be like perfect for an instant pot. All you need is a plug and a floor. Uh, but for storing one, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Oh, you could just wrap it in like some foam padding and use it as your pillow. A little instant pot pillow. Um, yeah. I mean, anything you can make in the instant pot, you can make on the stovetop, really. It just, uh, it's just for co convenience sake, really. So uh, hopefully I gave enough instructions on how you could uh, modify that. Uh, Christiana is asked, she hates asking, but what type of bowl do I use for my baked air fryer oatmeal bakes? Ceramic glass. I'm looking to buy one to fill my air fryer. This is the one I use right here. And you know what? I don't even know if I'm supposed to use this one. It says dishwasher, freezer, and microwave safe. It does not say oven safe, but I've used it a lot and it's never cracked. It is, uh... I don't know. I think it's ceramic. It's just 
It's rugged and it fits right in. It's kind of perfect, it fits right in. So that's what I use. Um, I think I've also in the past used just like a glass, like Tupperware type thing. Um, that's what I use. Uh, I haven't double checked that it, it it's meant for it. It hasn't chipped off any paint or leached any weird flavors into there. And I, I, I do it like almost once a week, especially this time of year. So I think that one's fine. I'm going to say ceramic or glass would be fine as long as they are fine for the temperature of your air fryer. And I do mine at 325, I think is the temperature I use for my oat bake. So that one seems to be fine. Uh, let's just, oh. Oh, Anita. Anita was letting me know she's still here and she's still obsessed with the channel. Well, thank you, Anita. I'm obsessed with all of you. Oh, you wanted to see a high-speed video of the family cleaning the kitchen? I don't I don't know if we want to expose that part of our family. That that's usually the time of night when everyone's getting a little crusty, a little tired, homework needs to be done, chores haven't been done yet. Uh, but if it's just the video, that might be fine. Um I will add that idea the next time we do one of our cooking videos to maybe just like set up a time lapse in the corner. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that interesting to watch, but uh, I'll, I'll shoot it and let you know if it's worth putting it. If it's worth putting it, I'll put it in. Uh, oh, the Ninja Creamy. Your family have so much fun with that. What is that? Well, you should write Ninja. And tell them to sponsor me, and I'll make a, a review uh, video of that product. I have a couple of those coming up. I've been, we've been really, really so blessed on the channel to have so many companies reach out to us recently, wanting to work with us and send us some products and, and give them a shot and let you know if we think they're any cool, any cool, any good. So uh, I'm trying to think of some of the ones that are coming up that are really exciting. I just got a juicer in the mail the other day. So I'm going to do a video called Will It Juice <laughs> and uh, going to make a whole bunch of different kind of juices and see if the family can identify what kind of juice it is and then which one they like the best. And if we even like this thing, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence about a juicer. I, you know, I, my brain is trained to not drink my calories, but I like the idea of I could use that to make sauces or um, dressings or something like that. And then the, I could use the pulp to make like crackers or something. So I'm kind of like, that's where my brain is going there. And I might include that kind of stuff in the video too. So we have that. Um, I think I've got a company uh, called, uh, oh, I shouldn't say it yet because we're still seeing if they want to work with us. I'm going to show you a cool product that I just got sent by a Canadian company. It's just like a wife and husband who are literally working out of their homes um again tour of the house and they sent me these things and i'm gonna talk about them more uh in an upcoming video but if i remember i'll try to put a description down below where you can order them from <laughs> don't mind me they're down here they're called splatter domes and it's hard to include them in the videos because you can't see the food that well but essentially you put these on top of your pot and um you know they extend out a lot further and you can put that on top and it keeps your kitchen cleaner less less mess after and there's two sizes this one's the smaller one this is one that fits in the microwave really nicely and they sent me a much bigger one that would go it's like the size of my head that would go on like a really giant pot or like a wok or something like that so it's they're called splatter dome uh i will add the link down below in case you're interested in this. And I wanted to support them because they're just a really small company starting out and I think it's a cool product. So uh, that's uh, something I'll mention on a video that's gonna come up in a couple weeks, which is, uh, oh, I'm gonna put it over here. Is I did, I, we just shot a video, we have to finish it, where I eat like Annie, Annie for an entire day. So Annie got to decide everything I put in my mouth. So stay tuned for that. If you want to watch me be un, unhappy for part, part, parts of a day and Annie just gleefully uh, punishing me for reasons that I did nothing to deserve. 
Um, okay, I'm just going to check out. So we'll probably start wrapping it up shortly. I don't want to hold anyone for too long. I could stay and do this all day. Uh, oh, thanks, Dolores. Dolores says, be sure to like the video. Yes, do that. Leave comments, share, all that kind of stuff helps the channel. Um, uh, and also, as I mentioned down below, if, if you want to support the channel in other ways, we just opened up a merch store. So you can go and check that out and see if there's anything there that you'd like to rock the PB with J merch. Uh, and then also you can, you can do things like we have a tip jar and um, I think you can do something here on the live chat too, if you're so inclined, all that kind of stuff helps keep the channel going and lets us keep on getting cookbooks and whatnot and, and have some fun with all of you. Uh, what did I say? Did you ask how many dates you use for? Yeah. So uh, four large dates is what I use um, or like eight to 10 small ones based on how big they are. I use 10 in mine today and, but I like mine a little more bitter. So if you got a, a, more of a sweet tooth, uh, maybe put a couple more in uh, or just make it once and then keep track if you thought it was sweet enough or not. And the next time you make it use less or more, right? Uh, that's, that's kind of the trick. Uh, what is Chet? Chet says they have a hard time making dinners for their non-vegan that their non-vegan family like. Uh, they've been bean eaters. They're non-bean eaters. Well, don't make the taco soup. Uh, you know what you could do instead of the uh, the beans in this, you could probably use TVP. The lentils would probably still be fine. The lentils essentially turn into mush in this, right? So because they're red lentils, they just get goopy. So you wouldn't even know they're in there. Uh, the other thing you could do, another thing you could do with this, if you wanted to make this recipe without beans, so uh, TVP would work, which is textured vegetable, pro vegetable protein. It's like a dehydrated um, tofu, soy kind of thing. Uh, the other thing you could do that could work really well is to um, shred some tofu uh, or just break it up into really small pieces with your hand. Toss it in like a little bit of soy sauce or tamari sauce with some chili powder or something and bake it in your oven, like over bake it to the part where it's almost a little bit crispy. And then you could add that into the taco soup and it would rehydrate it inside the pot and it would have more of like a meaty texture. Right. Um, I mean, you could just use ground uh, impossible beef or, or beyond beef if you are not, whole food plant-based but if you want to do like a healthier version with using tofu that's something that i would probably do uh, if i was to modify this recipe but otherwise uh yeah but what i said too about just the tofu and grating it that's another way to make tacos um on on the website i have a tofu fried rice that is uh is loved by many non-vegans um but yeah but that's what i'm kind of doing on this this uh this new series I'm going to be doing on the channel is going to people's houses who don't traditionally eat plant-based or just starting to eat plant-based and introducing new meals for them, you know, based on whatever, whatever their tastes are or things they don't like. I just chatted with this lovely woman yesterday who she's like, I don't want any peas in my, my dishes. So I'm going to design a menu for her and her, her wife and son with no peas. Um, yeah, they are pure cocoa chocolate chips. Just melt them with. Oh, thanks, Kimberly, for the tip. I think that's um, for. Oh, I think you're talking about the date thing that we were talking about earlier. Okay, let's check in for any other questions we've got um, before we wrap it up here. So I, I just can't tell you. I'm just overwhelmed by all the love and the, the comments here. I just don't want to miss any good. Que no, they're all good questions. I just want to miss any any questions. Oh, we're getting into the birthday ones. Crazy Farm Girl. Just had a birthday meal. Just egg poured over Jack and Annie's jackfruit sausages chopped into pieces, placed on tortilla. Ooh, so like a real souped up breakfast uh, breakfast burrito type thing. <sighs> Love that. So this, this is definitely a more of a birthday treaty type meal because it's uh, – I've had the Just Egg. And uh, I haven't had it enough. I've, I've had it in restaurants, I think. I've never bought it and brought it home and played with it. Uh, we try not to bring too many processed foods into the house just because then I don't eat them if they're not in the house. But that's something I would have at a restaurant for sure. But it sounds good. 
I would have that. You can come over and make that for me on my birthday, crazy farm girl. I'll leave the back door open. Uh, I'm starting to lose weight from going home. I'm not hermits in there. I have to cook for my husband and mom. Just sneak the sneak it into their food. They won't know. They're gonna they'll learn to love it, right? Make make them. That's the one trick I always say too. Is like when you can get those people who are not a hundred percent sure about eating this way into the kitchen with you. When people cook with you, they're more likely to enjoy the food, right? Um, or at least complain about it less. Berries in the morning for your birthday. Birthday berries. Love it. Birthday favorite Carrie's favorite birthday meal is Indian food. I live um just below little an area in Toronto called Little India. So we have some very lovely Indian foods up there. My challenge with Indian food now is I just find it since I've stopped eating so much oil, it's just a lot of oil. I don't know if you all find that. Like I, I that's what we always find when we order out food now. We really, we love the idea. We get really excited. We do it. And then every time we, you know, we're loving it. And then 10 minutes after we're done eating, we're just like, ugh. <laughs> we just kind of feel gross. The oil, we start feeling the oil. Um, but then we forget all about it by the next time someone has a birthday or we want to order out. But we've been better. We've been good about finding places that use less oil. Or sometimes we'll call up and ask them if they can omit some of it and who knows if they do or not you can usually tell when you eat it but you do what you can and then sometimes you just have a treat right from texas they love cookbook reviews even if you have already the book yeah uh i have a whole closet full of cookbooks over here i got i was i even had a i was propping up my laptop with the the bad manners and thug kitchen books they have a new one coming out in october so Love these books. Haven't reviewed them yet because we eat from them a lot. That, that's a lot of the challenge too, is a lot of the books you all recommend, we, we're familiar with the recipes, so it's harder to do a, a review, but I could always dive in and pick recipes we haven't done yet. So maybe that's something we'll do. There's just so many. Like, honestly, I think last time I counted all of the books you've all recommended, I think I've got over a year's worth of videos if I were to do them all. So again, we're stocked up, but you know, don't stop making recommendations, but just... Don't be upset with me if it takes me a while to get to the book that you recommended because we've had so many and it you know it takes a while to do them. We got to cook it, we got to eat it, the kids got to complain, I got to edit it, you know, it takes a while to do all that. Chess says they've lost 20 pounds since May after going whole food plant based. Chef's kiss to you, Chet. That's the way to do it. Take your time. You're in no rush. You know, I still find my weight is pretty steady, but I but it fluctuates depending on the time of year, depending if I've, you know, let slack, if my portions have gotten a little bit higher and whatnot. You know, I'm looking to probably pare down a few pounds myself before the holidays. And, you know, that'll be a combination of just trying to move more throughout the day uh, and eat a little bit less too. You know, I think I can be prone to like just loading up my bowl. And the trick to that for me is just picking a smaller bowl. Picking it, pick a smaller vessel and it looks the same, right? Another trick someone told me recently too is get heavier bowls and heavier cutleries because it tricks your brain into think you're eating more. You know, you're, you're used to like holding a certain amount, right? Or we're used to eating a certain amount of bites. So I thought that was cool. That was interesting. Deborah from Missouri. Hello. Um, a no boil lasagna recipe. I mean, every uh, every res lasagna recipe is a no-boil lasagna recipe if you get the right noodles. Um, we use Catelli, Catelli, C-A-T-E-L-L-I, not a sponsor, is uh, has this really great gluten-free, no-bake lasagna noodle that we use because woolly is gluten-free. So we, um, we'll use that, and uh, we just mix it in. We make sure there's a lot of sauce on the top and the bottom of it inside the lasagna pan. But that's all there is. I don't think I've done a lasagna recipe for the channel yet. That might be another a good one to do for a live cook. Um, that would be chaotic. But maybe that's a good one for a weekend. We can do a, a lasagna live cook. Maybe write that down. Um, and I can show you how we make a lasagna. I'll and probably Wooly will help out with that one because it can become a two-person operation. But that one's not so bad because it's actually pretty easy. I just made lasagna last week um, for us and a, and a family friend who uh, who has needed some meals recently. So we made them lasagna and dropped one off. 
Clark just woke up. Hi, Clark. Oh, I'm I'm super glad we can we can join your morning. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. The turmeric latte recipe I just gave is probably not super far off from Gaz's actually. In fact, I I can't remember. I definitely built mine based off of someone else's. Um, that's kind of what I how I develop a lot of my recipes is I find someone else's recipe and I tweak it like I do in the videos a lot, and then it kind of becomes our own. You know, or I'll find two different ideas I like and I'll blend them together and just a lot of experimenting. We've been, exp we, this one uh, brownie recipe we did in one of the cookbooks recently, like a little, little while ago that uses beets. Wooly is obsessed with it. She keeps on tweaking it and playing with it. And I think she's on her fourth iteration. Uh, and once we nail it, I'll add it to a family favorites video, but she's very close. Uh, I think she just keeps on saying she's experimenting because she just wants to keep on making it. Like that's what's really going on there. Um, oh yeah. Also, I should say I'm not using whole oat groats just in case that is confusing. Thanks Kimberly for bringing that up. When I mentioned that oatmeal recipe I use in the instant pot, uh, that's rolled oats. Um, if you were using, uh, oat groats or steel cut oats, uh, I don't know about oat groats, but for steel cut oats, I would use a third of a cup. It it's a third of the liquid, a third, sorry. That's the instant pot letting me know it's done, but it, it needs to, to, cool for a bit i can't release it so i can't show it to you still um so the ratio for oat steel cut oats to liquid is a third of a cup of steel cut oats to a cup of liquid uh, same cooking time is what i would do in the instant pot three minutes seems to do it uh oh thank you it's, it's, it's going to happen. I'm going to do a cookbook at some point. I just got to figure out the, uh, the way, the way to make it work. And I, I just don't know that world. I know the film world. That's, that's, I work in the film and television industry. So I know that I don't know publishing or anything like that. So I just had to do some more, some more research. Oh, this is a good tip from Dolores. They freeze aquafaba in ice cube trays and always have it on hand. Yeah. And then you just get as much as you need. That's a brilliant tip. You know, we do that a lot with, um, I mentioned the tomato paste. I love that. Okay. What grades does Willie work with? Uh, oh, so uh, Willie, my wife, she teaches grade one right now. Never, and Carrie's never going to throw their oh, a pot through their uh, aquafaba again. A pie video, huh? Pie is my favorite dessert. Um. Yeah, that's all I got. Cherry pie, specifically. How was my Thanksgiving? It was good. And I videotaped it because we're going to make um, a holiday favorites uh, video coming up. I'm going to try to put it up for either the end of November or the beginning of December to show you some of our favorite holiday recipes that we use. So stay tuned for that. Um, it'll be kind of a, a, bit, a bit of new stuff. Uh, reusing some stuff from, from older videos, a bit of a uh, collaboration, not a collaboration, but a Oh, my brain. A mishmash, as, as we've done with some of our some of our videos. Okay. Let me see if we have any questions before we wrap this up. Another video idea from Brianna. Uh, different chef's recipes for the same thing and tell us your thoughts on which is the best or how you combine the best idea. Oh, that's interesting. Making like five versions of the same meal or something. I like that. That's a good one. That is another good one. Five recipes. I don't know. I'm trying not to take too long to write type this. Oh no. Sorry for those just sitting there watching me type. Okay. Oh, I, I, I'm going to apologize right now if I miss any of your questions. It's not intentionally. Uh, you put a lot of greens in your juice too, just not fruit bases. Yeah, I, I have this, the biggest bag of spinach in my fridge right now that I'm definitely going to make some spinach, juice some spinach later. So uh, I will be doing that. My throat is just talking, huh? And we got doubles for the pie video. Mindy also wants pie. Carrie wants to know if they can volunteer as tribute to come out and have you cook with us. I mean, <clears throat> if you live within driving distance of Toronto, 
uh, and you want me to come out and cook for your family for a video, email me. Email me at pbwithjeremy at gmail.com and, uh, and we'll discuss it. We'll see if we can make that happen uh, because it's fun. I, I'd love to connect with more of you and, you know, we need content for the channel. So uh, definitely, um, definitely check in with me there and we'll see if we can make that happen. I'm, I'm up for that for sure. Do, do, do. Oh, the merchandise. So the for our new store, thanks for asking, Julie. Can it ship to the USA? It's actually a Shopify store. Um, so it's all through Printify. So it all comes directly through there. I don't have to luckily deal with all of that stuff. So I, I, I'm pretty sure it ships internationally. Uh, and the I'm sure the shipping rates uh, change based on where you are. I, I hope they're not too high. I have no control over that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, the, the merch should be available worldwide as far as I know. If it's not, let me know and I'll see what I can do. But uh, I'm, I'm just excited if anyone even wants to wear some PB with J merch. That'd be fun to see. Um, okay. Let's just scroll through here as we wrap it up. I think someone thinks I did a lasagna video in the past. I might have. We've done a lot of videos now. <laughs> oh, you, John made it too. So when my instant pot went off, they went over to check mine. It's still eight minutes left. That's hilarious. Mine's now at five. Um, I love that you guys are actually cooking along with me. That makes me so happy. Uh, that's so much fun. What is this? I freeze in super cubes. Those are great. Are they like giant ice cube kind of things? Super cubes? Is that what they are? Okay. All right. My wife, uh-oh, my wife has a twin here in Southwest Michigan. Is it you, Michigan lady? Are you my wife's twin? As far as my wife knows, she does not have a twin. But uh, if it is you, I will let her know. All right, everyone. This was so much fun. I went way longer than I was going to, but you stuck around and, so, and, and showed me the love. And so, you know, I, how could I not stick around? Um... Thanks again for all the love you've shown me and my family and all your wonderful comments and whatnot. There's a new video I just put up today. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, that shows our salad dressing formula. Um, it, it's made through me um, doing a one with kombucha as kind of our citrus acid, not acid citrus kind of thing. Um, so uh, that's the basis of that. But uh, I, I won't ruin it. I want to tell you the formula here because you got to watch the video. It's new and up. Uh, one last question from John before I, I, I disappear. Any thoughts on the coconut milk cream results from your Nisha video? Uh, the, the jury's still out on that one, John. I, I, I checked the cans again, and it's like, it, it seems to be that there's enough fat content in the, in the milk I was using to be borderline cream, but obviously the results did not air out. So uh, I think I just got to go full fat next time. If I'm going to do those things. Um, yeah. Oh, Karen wants to know if it's any salad dressing recipe. I, I'm going to try to get Annie to add that into the day she made me eat with like her. Um, she didn't do it for any of the meals that day. That was my hope. But I'm definitely going to get her to uh, add that into something shortly. Um, yes. In Simple Life. So anyone just tagging on now. Uh, the video will be live as soon as I, I stop. I end the stream in a, in a minute. So you should be able to, to watch it from the beginning. And I'll go through and I'll try to add some chapters too, just so that way it's easier for the if you need to. Okay. Um, all right. Uh-oh. Julie got a burn warning. That'll happen. Be careful. Don't burn out your Instant Pot the way I did. But if you do... In the vegan instant pot cookbook, you can watch me fix my instant pot. And but you'll want to watch the video that I linked to because that person actually shows you all the steps. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed doing this. I'm gonna to try to make this more of a regular thing. I'm mostly working from home these days and, and doing a lot of stuff for the channel. Um, thanks to all of you for making that possible. So uh, you know, I don't know if I'll do it once a week, but I'll definitely try to get into more of a habit since. It's really fun to do this with you. I love answering the questions. And like I said, as long as you all keep showing up, we'll keep on making videos. So 
Thanks again for everything. Um, share this and then uh, stay tuned this weekend for a brand new video on Saturday where we review uh, the 15 minute vegan cookbook. And we actually time the recipes to let you know if you can do them in 15 minutes or not. So check out, that's the video coming out on Saturday. Thanks again for watching everyone.